There's no doubt that you can catch an awful lot of fish using that technique, which is called uptiding. Basically, you're fishing from an anchor boat, and instead of dropping your lines over the stern of the boat, letting it go away in the current, you're actually casting your line up and across where the flow is coming down. The lead, which is invariably a grip lead with some wires in there, spikes in the seabed. You let a big belly of line go out in that current. So instead of the line being forced and pull the lead out straight away, it runs up that curve of line and sort of neutralizes itself down by the bend and then comes back up here again. So that big belly of line, the pressure actually pulls the grip lead in. There's a wide variety of grip leads you can use. I've got some here I can show you like this. It's a homemade one. You can, of course, get shop bought ones. In fact, what I do, I just run them past you now and you can see just two or three of the different types and what they do. Okay, so this is the one I was just holding. It's just a regular lead with a long wire tail on it that stabilizes it when you're casting. It doesn't wobble so much in the air. And all I've done is drill through here four ways. Well, two ways, isn't it? It's two ways. Drill that way, drill through that way at the base. Slightly staggering those two. You can see that otherwise one, one wire is going to hit the other. So you want to put one wire in, say, there. And if you look, if I turn it carefully, you'll see the other wire is a little bit higher. This is just regular coat hanger wire. I bend an angle under it like this. This one's very battered. It's been fishing a number of times and been very fortunate in not being lost. So I'm leveling up the spikes like that. And then with a half hitched rubber band, yes, a good old elastic band, I just go round it four or five times. That holds those wires in place there. When it hits the seabed, the tightening up pressure will just pull these feet in. Whichever way it rolls, it's going to have those anchors there. It's going to anchor in there until a fish pulls it out or you retrieve it to rebate or recast. Obviously, when the pressure comes back this way to retrieve it, your fishing line is attached there. Put it this way. This is stuck in the sand. This is going to, depending on how tight you have the rubber band, roll over. Rubber band kicks off and it's, it's easy to wind in. You can see that. It's sort of idiot proof. It's, it's not pulling in. It's going to skid along and you can retrieve it. There's another type you can use, which is a fixed wire, called fixed wires. Again, you can see that's got a long tail on it. This has got rigid wires here. They don't move. And they're bent at that angle, so they grip in the seabed. And when you go to wind in, they're going to trip, trip, trip. But they're not rigid. They're not thick and rigid like the wires on the coat hanger rig. This is a stainless spring wire. You can probably make your own. If you want to find some spring wire, go into a aircraft model shop because this is a sort of wire I think it's 18 SWG size that they use for the undercarriage of uh, model aircraft so that's what you've got that's a fixed one now what they say about these is that it actually whereas this one if you get a fish that pulls that grip lead and trips out it's skidding along the hook could fall out but with this way wherever that fish is going it's just bumping along the bottom it shouldn't snag look how easy it is to bend it's very very springy it should pull through the snags pop out so that a lot of anglers say actually helps hold the hook in good theory on very strong tides you can use a much longer one like this this one has got longer wires that have been bent round again spring wire like you can see it's a spring wire one some valve rubber here I mean, you could put all those and just whip that with some fishing line. Same effect, but this is a neater way of doing it. The piece of valve rubber. And it's bent around. Instead of being straight, let's say like a, a regular triangle there, this one seems to be better and hold better when it's bent like that. Again, the principle of this is when you cast out in the boat, it holds in the tide. If it does jump, it doesn't trip out totally. It's always going to catch again. So it always maintains some form of pressure to your rod top. Another couple of popular ones that you can use. This one, they make loads of different ones, different colours. And this is a trip out one. Whereas you can squeeze these two legs together like this. You can make that just here. I'm just squeezing it tight. And these locate in little slots there. These, well, I'm going to call them elbow pieces. If you can see that, they just locate. Click, as we heard that one. Same the other side. Just click them in place like that. This one is actually a luminous one. I think you can um, shine your torch on it at night. Whether it works, who knows. 
obviously you tie or clip your lead on uh, your uh, link here and you've got a little bait holder hook there sticking out should you so want to put the bend of your hook in there just like this let me show you it rests in like that it's all for beginners it's all for beginners okay that's what you do when you go to retrieve it they just ping out look they just pop out very easily no problem there and this is another type of lead same thing but you'll notice this is a commercially made one it's also got that slightly longer tail it stabilizes it in the air this one you can unscrew and put different size leads onto that cap which is a locking cap that's quite a handy method so you can buy an assortment of leads and still maintain the grip this has individual legs if I can get those sorted out you can just see those they just pinch either side there that's one on go around two on three on four on same principle they got that little kink in them there and when they snag in the bottom, like my hand, they will trip out like this. Look, they just trip away individually. Whereas the other leads, if it trips out, these trip out two at a go. This one trips each leg individually. So they don't all trip out at the same time. Just one. If it's caught on one stone, one leg trips out. So there you go. Various different types of wired grip leads. Uh, for doing the rig, you can use some... Really straight mono, a couple of swivels and a hook, but it's ideal for boat fishing. Right, glasses on, a couple of ways of tying this rig up. One is with the lead actually attached to the shock leader or main line. The other one has a standoff link to the lead. I'll show you both first. I'm going to use, let's say, six feet of trace. I'm going to use this as his red 50 pound, which I'll, in fairness, I probably would use for trace anyway. Quite happy to use that in the UK. Stroke any coils out. I'm going to tie a decent sized hook on the end of the air. You can use what they call panel rigs, which are two hooks in tandem. They can sometimes tangle up. You know, it, 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 it depends on the angler, on the day, how the tide is going, how the weed is going to catch on the hooks. But I would say my recommendation would be just use a single hook, pull it tight. Snip off the surplus. Okay, and the other end of this place goes a decent size swivel. Actually, I could probably use a smaller one. If I use a smaller one, it doesn't really matter, but you can see the, the two together, I feel. So I swivel, so it's just a standard size trace of whatever hook size you want. In this case, it is a 6-0 or O'Shaughnessy Eagle Claw hook. I get those from the States because they're pretty cheap, but they were. Good hook, had a lot of fish on them. Now you can do tuck plugs, you can do what you want. Basically this is just a standard trace. So there we are, a swivel, a six foot trace, some people use a bit longer, and a hook. Now what you've got to imagine is, how am I going to do this with some yellow? Hang on one second, there's a piece. I better show you with this. I've got to imagine it comes through the rod. I wonder if I can do it this way. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, folks. Never done this before. I'm going to do a big loop in it. Might help me tie knots. I'm going to put a loop of line around there. Right, here's my rod top, if that makes sense. So from this, I'm going to put two ways of doing this. You can, if you want, put your lead straight on. You might be better if you're casting quite hard to get one of these booms. See the boom has a little lead clip there so you've gone from your rod top, you're going to slide that up, you're going to tie on your trace at the other end, six foot maybe 50 pounds, you can, it depends what size fish you're fishing for to be honest, I like 50 and this is 30, I'm going to tie the two two different colours, just rough knots so I can just show you. Snippy, snippy. Okay, so that's coming down from the rod. Maybe I can put it over there, might be better. Let's put the lead on there. So here goes the grip lead going on there. The rigs are much easier to show you when they're actually put together. He's got nice and neat little clips, very, very strong. Now, okay, so you can see that that end of that tube, which is rigid, comes right up to the knot but it doesn't jam, it just goes over the top of the knot. So there's my lead. 
All right, so it's a running, free running uh, rig all the way to my trace here. But then how on earth do you cast that in a boat? It could be oh, pretty nasty. If there's other people in the boat, you might cast your, uh, I don't know, your camera bag in the water or something like that. So what you do when you cast, when you're up tiding in a boat, is get hold of the end of the hook with your bait on, and you just put it over the leg. Imagine this is baited. You've got to use your imagination in these programs. Over the leg. You're resting it over the leg there of one of those wires. You go casting out up tide. Tell people in the boat you're going to cast. Don't cast with this rig inside the boat. Lay it outside the boat and let everybody know. It doesn't bother me. I'm fishing on my own. I do what I want. I'm just saying on a charter boat, always ask the skipper first. He'll, he'll tell you what to do. You cast it out. As this impacts with the water, this falls free. It just comes totally free. It goes bang like that. Comes off. The whole rig then straightens out in the tide. And there's your free running lead there. It digs in the tide, you let a big belly and line come up and then you either see the bite pull down or you'll see what we call a slack liner. It comes back, in which case you wind, speed wind down, take the slack all the way out the belly of the line so that you get back tight to the lead, thump the hook home and you should have the fish. But the most important thing is put that hook on the bend when you cast. So that's a basic boat up tidy rig, but sometimes I fish with one with a standoff lead away from it. To make that standoff uh, lead link, I've got my swivel, I've got maybe 15 or 18 inches of 50 pound line. I'm just going to tie on a lead clip to the end of it. I'm not going to use the boom on this one because the lead is away from the main line anyway, which I'll show you in a second. Pull this up tight. They're not difficult rigs, you know, some of the most basic rigs are in fact the best ones. So there we go, a swivel, 15, 17 inches of line. Then there's my leg clip, there's my lead. I just clip the lead on. You could tie the lead on here in fairness. I always wonder when people say, you, you mustn't tie the line to the lead. Well, hang on, when you look at it, that's stainless there. That's one assumes stainless there, what's the difference? But however, it is easier just to pop this off change leads, change designs, I can put on a, one of these big ones, you know, if the tide is really pushing through, I've got no trouble, I can snap this one on, I can put that one on, unclip it, so the clips do actually have a use, they're quick. Okay, so there's my rig, now, here we go with the uh, the rod top, just trying to get it over there for you, without pulling everything over, that's better, that's better, why did I do that before? So this is down from my rod top, I go through that swivel, okay, and then I put a bead on so that swivel doesn't jam up against the other swivel on my trace. If I tie it together, hopefully, it will become apparent. Two, three, you can use tuck bloods if you want tuck bloods. Whatever knot you're happy with. When people say there's only, you're not using the right fishing knot, I can tell you now the right fishing knot is the one you just caught the last fish on. So there we go, I'm hoping you guys can see this. This is the standoff one, here's the lid. I've got myself a catch already, another lid. Let go, let go. There is the lid. You can see it comes up here to the swivel. There's my running attachment, it's exactly the same, you see it? The bead stops this swivel jamming over that knot. You see it comes up nice and neat against that white bead there, swivel. 50 pound trace down to my hook. The same principle applies. Your baited hook goes onto one of the arms of the grip lead. You let everybody know on the boat, and unless you're on your own, talk to yourself like I do. Cast out, up tide, up current, sort of up river if you can get it in your mind. It hits the seabed, it, it's off like that. This goes away in the tide. The grip lead will still catch, okay, but what it does is it gives the fish a bit more freedom of movement because rather than pull straight on that lead if the lead was up against this swivel, okay, it's actually got quite a bit of movement there before it actually, it's got this amount of movement free as well before it pulls on the lead. Same principle applies, let a load of line go out, 
put your reel and drag, tie it down on the boat, make sure it doesn't get pulled over because there's a lot of pressure in some of the big ties that we fish here. But that's two up tied rigs, both of which work. I'm not going to say, look, I'm not saying one's any better than the other. Maybe this one, perhaps the average guys don't use, you know, the one with the standoff lead. Gives a little bit more movement. If you've got finicky, slow biting fish, maybe like rays or something like that. And of course you can use what hooks you want. If you're going for flat fish, you use small hooks, one O's, two O's, that sort of size, size ones. Bigger fish with a big chunk of bait. If you're after conger, bass, you know, big fish with big jaws, go for a bigger hook. There it is, another rig for you, an uptiding boat rig. We'll see you again. I don't even know where. The river, the boat, the lake, the sea, the beach. Man alive, they're totally awesome. Fishing show gets everywhere. Don't forget to watch the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show, Mike's channel, and look out for our magazine, a free online download called Yes, the Awesome Angler. More rig tying, I feel.